Hi, welcome to this teaching video on neurointervention for complex cerebral aneurysms. What do we mean by complex aneurysms? The giant aneurysms, the dissecting aneurysms, blister aneurysms, aneurysms with near the neck rupture, dysplastic bifurcation, and aneurysms with artery from the sac are the ones which we regard as complex aneurysms. And maybe the aneurysm with vasospasm, tortuosity, small aneurysms, multilobulated aneurysms, and aneurysm with thrombus are also complex. We'll cover the first half in this short video. Now the ICYA trials compared also the results of coiling versus clipping in the patient with large and giant aneurysms. And what one could see that the large and giant aneurysm, the complication rates of surgery, which was done in 1917 patients was quite high particularly when they were uh, large in size and when the age was more than 50 years and they were in posture circulation. Comparatively, in the coiling group, the complication rates were much lower, but the problem in coiling group has been that they tend to come back. Just to show you a case of stent assisted coiling, there is a large fusiformal aneurysm of ICA and where you can see the artery is entering and leaving the aneurysm at separate points. So we place a stent from one arterial segment to the distal arterial segment so as to construct a new artery in between and the lines in the lower figure show the way the stent was placed within the aneurysm. And then we coiled uh, the sac and the uh, aneurysm and you can see the post coiling image. So while this method is quite safe, but the recurrence rates in large aneurysm with stent assisted coilings are still significant. Now the recent advance has been flow diverter placement and just to show you how we manage these patients. This is a patient again with ICA large, uh, it's a giant aneurysm and we coiled the aneurysm because it comes with uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage, we coiled it in emergency and we left the neck of the aneurysm which, which, which was difficult to coil at that stage and this post coiling 3D image showing the residual base of the aneurysm. Now this base we decided to treat by flow diverter stents and the lower image shows the regular stent and, in, and side by side of flow diverter stent which has got a much finer meshwork. And when we place the stent, the intima covers it and the aneurysm thrombos, thromboses and while the patent arteries, the side branches, they remain patent. And this is what we did in this patient. We placed the flow diverter stent, the immediate flow diverter placement shows still the base of the aneurysm filling, but on the follow up, the lower image shows complete reconstruction and the aneurysm has shrank as well. Another patient with a giant, complicated, multilobulated aneurysm had come with the bleeding. In the acute stage, again, we coiled the aneurysm and at later stage, we placed a flow diverter stent and the follow-up showed complete reconstruction of the resident aneurysm. It's like a normal artery now. So wh wh where are we in giant and large aneurysm? Stent assisted coiling is safe, but they need follow-up and possible repeat treatment. Flow diverters are evolving. They are probably they are now the treatment of choice for large and giant broad neck paraclinoidal aneurysms. I personally feel risk in uh, trained hands and carefully certification patients is quite reasonable. Parent vessel occlusion may still be remain an option in treatment of cavernous large and giant aneurysm which have got very good collateral flow through the communicating arteries. Another section now we come to is the fusiform aneurysm. This is a patient with subarachnoid hemorrhage, has a fusiform upper basilar aneurysm with both the superior cerebellar and the PCA coming from the aneurysm. So what did we do? We placed a stent and placed some coils and what in the end we stopped at first stage but what we could see the symphony aneurysm was filling and it grew in two weeks to a larger size and then we placed another stand and some more coils which result on follow-up on almost complete reconstruction of the aneurysm with only small part remaining from where the left posterior cerebral artery was filling. Now we come to the blister aneurysm. Now these are very tricky. They are very friable, they can continue to grow and they can re-rupture easily. Now I'll show you a case of 38 year old male with massive subarachnoid hemorrhage and this is the classical blister aneurysm in the supraclinoid internal carotid artery in the 3D image and the same scene in the 2D image. So what did we do? We placed two overlapping stands with no coils and on the follow up there was a complete resolution of the blister aneurysm and we have one of the largest series published in uh, Neurology India of endovascular management of blister aneurysm. But there also now with evolution we are using more and more we are using the pipeline uh, device. 
So this is a patient with subarachnoid hemorrhage and with a very small blister aneurysm in the ICA, we placed a flow diverter pipeline device and immediately you can see that it is filling but on follow up in the last image the aneurysm was completely gone. A more complicated case of ICA blister fusiformal aneurysm. This patient also had a small paraclinoidal aneurysm. We placed the flow diverter and on the follow up the aneurysm was completely gone and the intima was covering the stent very very well. So in fusiform dissecting aneurysms can be difficult to treat. One can place overlapping stents with coils as much as possible to buy time and to promote thrombosis. With continued growth is, is, is a possibility and one should do an early check. In recent times, uh, in the internal carotid artery, we have practically switched to flow diverter stent placement. You have to distinguish these aneurysms from very small barrier aneurysms. So very small barrier aneurysms can be coiled. They're just, uh, because of the small size, they're technically challenging. This is a patient with a uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage, severe spasm and a very small probable aneurysm. We did dilatation and what after endarteal dilatation one could see a very small anterior communicating artery aneurysm we placed one small coil there with complete thrombosis and we were the first group to publish on coiling techniques of less than two millimeter aneurysms in american journal of neuroradiology even very very small one millimeter aneurysms we are recently coiling with one millimeter coil so this is a patient with a very small 1.2 millimeter anterior communicating artery aneurysm with extremely tortuous uh, anatomy, both the aortic arch and the ICA. So we managed to take the microcatheter to the neck of the aneurysm, placed a one millimeter coil there with complete thrombosis. Another section of the patient with near the neck rupture. This is a patient with a broad neck anterior communicating artery aneurysm with a near the neck lobule, which is probably the rupture site. So in these cases, it, we always use a balloon and we place it in the right ACA, we started with the coiling and then we take care that the some coil loops goes into these lobules re resulting in a very good uh, outcome. Sometimes we even reposition the catheter to get all the lobules of the aneurysm. This is a multi-lobulated uh, anterior communicating aneurysm and we profile it well in the 3D images. So we did balloon assisted coiling which in the end looks reasonable but then we check in all angles and we realize that a very small lobule is still remaining there. We took a microcatheter to that part and placed a 1 millimeter coil there resulting in absolute complete reconstruction of the artery. Some dysplastic bifurcation aneurysm we use double balloon technique, uh, bilobe, trilobed at middle several artery aneurysm and the 2D images shows the same. We place two balloons into the each middle several artery division and then perform the coiling so as to have a complete reconstruction. Sometimes you can be innovative like in this patient with a giant ICA ruptured aneurysm. We want to secure both the ACAs and MCA while doing the coiling so as to get the maximal occlusion. So we took a balloon from the left side to the right side through the anterior communicating artery across the neck of the aneurysm and then when we performed the coiling, we knew the parent vessels are perfectly spared and we could go on and do a very uh, good packing and a good reconstruction near the neck leading to a good outcome as the post-op 3D images show and on the follow-up in the last uh, image, it shows a completely stable result. Some patients have got a branch coming from the aneurysm and for that what we use is balloon over inflation technique. This is a giant uh, ophthalmic aneurysm with the ophthalmic artery, which is the artery to the eye uh, coming from the base of the aneurysm. So we took a balloon and we overinflated it and then we started with the coiling so that we spare a little bit of the neck along with the ophthalmic artery coming for it, resulting in a pretty good occlusion. So where do we stand in complex aneurysms? In terms of neural intervention, we have to really be important to recognize and analyze on particularly on 3D these aneurysms and we have to be comfortable with all approaches and techniques. We should have a strategy with a backup plan and, and it has been shown better outcomes are there in high volume centers with expertise, technology and teamwork and you should have good vascular neurosurgery backup as well and we have published our first uh, 300 cases uh, with intervention as the first approach in Asian general neurosurgery with pretty reasonable results. Thank you.